Right, everyone. Welcome. Today, uh, we're going to talking about affirmations and why they do not work. So if you are somebody who has been practicing affirmations, positive affirmations, and thinking it's not working same as, you know, some of your mentors and the rich people and the happy people have been telling you, or the books have been telling you, then you might find something interesting and the reasoning behind why it does not work. If you are somebody who is embarking the journey, who has been told that, you know, start using affirmations in your daily practice, which, by the way, is a good practice, but there is a reason why it doesn't work. So you're also lucky to be coming to this episode because in this episode, I will break down what affirmations are, why they don't work, and what is the science behind it, what mistakes sages and people of wisdom have talked about affirmations throughout the ages. And what can you do to make these affirmations work? I do want to call out that I am not a affirmations person myself. Uh, I have tried it in the past. It never worked for me. I have practiced affirmations in the past. I have read uh, so many books. Um, and, you know, I've tried to work with it. But I haven't seen it working for me. And so I gave up without really understanding why it didn't work. But more recently, I have come to realization as I look back, you know, what worked, what didn't work, and as I am discovering new things in my journey. So I thought it would be a great lesson for somebody who's either new or on the journey or have been on the journey, but, you know, realizing that it's not working or it's such a hard work, you know, jumping up and down and saying, I am happy while well, you're feeling really sad inside. So we'll dive into that in this episode. Before we get into the crux of the episode, let's just look at our experiences so that it makes sense to you when I get into the core of the topic that you can relate to what I'm saying and how I have come to this conclusion or I, how I have discovered that affirmations don't work. Obviously, it's my own experience. Maybe for some people it works, but I would say that with a, quite a certainty it works because of the certain things that I'm going to share um, in this episode later on. Have you ever been in a situation where you were talking to somebody, whether it's a colleague or somebody in your relation, a friend, a coworker, um, or maybe a total stranger who's saying all the right words to you? or you feel like you're not able to connect or reverse that you are saying all the right words to the person um, opposite to you and you're not finding a way to connect or you're not finding the person is showing an interest. Uh, have you? I have. Or how about a salesperson trying to sell you the things, telling you all the right things or a product that you know that you really need but yet you don't buy that product, at least from that person. Or how about an actor in a movie where you felt the actor didn't do justice or it feel like he was overacting, it was not delivering, it was not natural for that actor to play that character. And how about a singer singing a song that's perfectly beautifully written with the perfect music, yet you don't feel you know, the connection to the song. And the minute somebody else gets the mic and jumps on and you are able to feel the song, same songs, same music, but just a different person. I assume we have been in this situation and we have seen it, if not all, some of the situations, some of these instances in our life, we have experienced with different people ourselves where, you know, Regardless of what the role was, what the situation was, we experienced that we were not able to connect to the person or the person was not able to speak into uh, us, you know, um, 
uh, a funny example or another example I thought was when you are negotiating with your boss or a, a company or an interview or a customer, uh, you know, when that person in the opposite size is trying to tell you that they are thinking in your best interest while in your heart, you know, they are not there. There is something intuitive that you're able to feel that tells you or guides you that, okay, there's something missing. There's a gap between what is being said and what you're feeling. And so you do not resonate with that situation. And it is same with the affirmations. When it's just about words, when you're affirming the words only without any connection to those words, it just sounds phony, unreal, to your own mind and brain and your subconscious. But there is a deeper reason and science behind why it does not work, which we'll discuss as we go on. But let's start looking at affirmation, what affirmation is for people who have never done an affirmation and wondering what affirmation is. The literal meaning of affirmation is process or action of affirming to something, breaking down into the simple English. You write down or you think and then you write down about something that you want in your life, in your future that you currently don't have, but you desire to have those things, whether they are material things like house, wealth, job, or, you know, your partner or, um, you know, a relationship or you want to live somewhere, whatever you want in your life. So you write it down. For example, money, health, partnership, relationship, travel, all those kind of things that we have in our mind that makes our life better, that we feel enhances our experience, that gives meaning to our life, we, we write it down. So once you've written it down, you make a list of that and and you write it in a present tense as if it has happened. For example, if you wanted a lot of money, you write down, I am abundant. If you wanted a perfect partner, you write down, I'm living with a perfect partner in harmony and I'm enjoying it. If you wanted a healthier body, you write down, I am healthy and perfect, I'm fit, I'm enjoying my diet, I'm enjoying my food. So this kind of thing that you write down what you want, but write it down in a present sense that as if it has already happened. And then uh, you pick up a time where you stand up in the front of the mirror and you just read out loud and you continuously do it in a way to make your brain believe that it has happened. Now, there's a science that tells that it does, you know, our brain does not know from what actually has happened versus what we are making it believe it happens. It, but there is a key thing that makes brain believe it. First of the thing is you have to believe it, right? That it has happened. Then only you can make your brain believe and mind and subconscious mind believe that it has happened. <clears throat> but what happens is most people get stuck on this step only, the first step, which is affirmation writing and then telling yourself this daily. People get stuck on the words. They are repeating the words day in, day out. They're not seeing the change. Because somewhere in their body, they're in subconscious mind. They cannot make believe. And I can give you stories of why people get stuck there, even when they're not seeing the evidence, when you, even when they're not seeing the results. But maybe there is a separate episode altogether where we talk how people get stuck and what we can do about it. Let's look at the affirmations first and why people get stuck. Right? If you... Remember at the beginning of the episode, I gave you a few examples of the people that we haven't personally connected or different situations where we have not felt connection. And the number one reason we never didn't feel that connection was there was missing. The missing link was emotion. There was not an emotion to grab our attention and connect it to what it was being said. So in other words, whatever was being said out in words lacked the emotion. There was a gap between the emotion and the words being spoken. And this is same with affirmations, right? You will never buy something from somebody 
where you are not feeling connection, you're not feeling something within yourself that is, you know, helping you make that buying decision. You will not connect to an actor watching a movie if there was no emotion involved. You will not like a song if there were not the right emotions or if it didn't evoke the right emotions in you. But it, in order for that to happen, the singer has to feel those emotions and transform and evoke those emotions in you, right? So affirmations are the same thing. Because your subconscious brain will never believe in something where it is not getting the signal in form of emotions from your body. Let's say you want a partner in your life and you're affirming daily uh, out loud in front of the mirror every day, multiple times during the day. You're telling yourself, I am living with my perfect partner. I love my partner. The partner is taking care of me. We have a beautiful relationship. We live in harmony. All the positive things that you can think about a, a relationship and you say those things out loud day in, day out, every day, you know, yet it doesn't work. While in your mind, you're feeling lack of it, right? So you are saying these words out loud, but in your silence, in your mind, you're feeling like, I may never find that person. Why is he or she not showing up? What is wrong with me? Why can I never find that partner? Look around. Everybody else is having a partner. They are living a married life. They are living a happy children life. Why is it not working for me? So when you are making affirmations about you know, I have the perfect partner while your silence in the talks that you're doing with yourself, in the emotions that you're feeling within, there's a lack, there's a sense of lack, right? So that creates a gap between what you're saying, what you're feeling, and because you're feeling your stronger feeling and inclination is towards the lack no matter how many times or how many years, uh, you know, you try affirmation, it will never work because you yourself do not believe in those affirmations. For those affirmations to work, you have to believe them in your mind, in your body. Otherwise, those affirmations will not work no matter how many times you say it. Now let's look at why it will not work. See, the basic premise of affirmation is that you speak into the universe. You're actually putting an order to the universe in the form of your words. And you're saying, I want this. But the only thing is the universe does not understand the words, the physical nature of the things. It understands what you feel. It understands the vibration of that energy. And that's how it responds. It responds to the vibration. So while in the words, in the talking language, you're saying good, 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 good things, positive things. Whereas inside you're feeling lack, negative, um, you know, uh, you're missing. You're saying that this is not working. That lack, that feeling, that vibration sends a signal to universe. It's not working. And you says, okay, your order is it's not working. So here you are. It's not going to work. So, so when you say, I may never have the perfect partner. I may never find this. It never works. Universe goes, fine. You'll never find the perfect partner. It never works. You'll never have it. You'll always be single. You'll always be miserable. Not that you... Not that is given that you, all single people are miserable, but your lack of feeling miserable because not finding that relationship is actually making you miserable. It's not a secret that everything in this universe that we know, the physical existence and the cosmos is energy, right? And it's just different forms of energy, but at the core of it, it's still energy. So that's the science, right? I'm not going to get deeper into it, but you can find, I'm, I'm sure I'm not a science person, 
but through my own experience, through my own learning, I've discovered that everything at the core of it is energy. So our thoughts, our desires, our feelings, they are all emitting energy in form of the vibrations, right? It's creating vibrations. We may not be able to sense it always. We may not be able to feel it always. It's still, you know, emitting that energy, that vibration, just like you know, we are not able to see all the kind of different levels of light and hear all the different levels of sound. There's only, you know, within a spectrum range of things that we that we can hear are audible to human um, and the light, same with the light. So same with this energy, just because we cannot see it does not mean it does not exist. <clears throat> Obviously, you don't have to believe me. <laughs> uh, who am I to say all these things? I'm just somebody on this journey who has learned some things. But here are few people that have walked before us on this earth. And, you know, these are some of the things they have said. And hopefully it gives you confidence and lets you know that, you know, maybe there is a truth. Now I'm, ask I'm not asking you to completely believe me, but I want you to come from the point, maybe, maybe there is a chance for Manpreet is saying there is some truth to it. And let me explore what that truth is. So start with that maybe, because that will help you, you know, grab uh, and learn for yourself. Albert Einstein says, everything in this life is vibration. Well, that's pretty specific. Everything in this life is vibration. Coming from the, one of the, you know, brilliant scientists of our times. How about this one? If you want to find the secrets of universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Guess who said it? Nikola Tesla, brilliant, brilliant, uh, you know, scientist who discovered so many things. And uh, this was his journey. Abraham Hicks says, as you think, you vibrate. And as you vibrate, you attract. And I think that's gives you all about affirmation. Obviously, Abraham Hicks is big on law of attraction, but, you know, there's a deep, deep message that you, when you're thinking, you're vibrating. And whatever you're vibrating on is what you're attracting. So if you're vibrating from the lack, if you're thinking about lack within you, even though you may be speaking something else. For example, I may be say, speaking all these things, but within if I'm thinking, this is stupid, this is, th you know, not working, whatever, right? It will show up, right? So whatever you're thinking, you're vibrating in that energy. And whatever you're vibrating on, that's what you're attracting. And a quick check on whether or not you're vibrating on the frequency you want to be is checking your reality. If you do not have the results you want in your life, it's more likely you have not been vibrating on the right energy. That means you have not have not been thinking the right thoughts. No wonder Napoleon had to write the book, Think and Grow Rich. Think and grow rich. Meaning whatever you're thinking, will lead you to grow rich, right? It's an excellent book. If you have not read, it's a great, great book to start with. There are a few other quotes that I want to read. Two of them, I couldn't find who the author was, but they were profound, so I'm sharing it with you. Negativity can only affect you if you're on the same frequency. Vibrate higher. Wow, that means anytime it's somebody negative is affecting you, anybody, anytime somebody who's negative says something wrong and in news, you know, something goes wrong and it starts to affect your mental peace and balance. I mean, that means you're affect, you're really coming down to their frequency, right? Think of it. 
if you are becoming aware of just this little thing that anytime you feel unease, negative uh, emotions in yourself, that means you're on a wrong frequency. That means something in your environment, whether it's people, whether it's something happening there, it's causing something negative and bringing down you to a frequency that is making you negative. And the minute you realize it, you can snap out of it by vibrating at a higher frequency, by changing the thought, by changing your environment, by changing the people. This one is really beautiful. Universe is asking, show me your new vibration. I will show you miracles. Show me your new vibration. That means show me the vibration of the person that you want to be, of the change of the life you want to be in. And I'll show you miracles. I'll, make, I'll show you how it becomes a reality. In the ancient Eastern scriptures, this vibration has been said as anhadnad, in a way, soundless sound. Now, it's very hard to perceive what soundless sound is. And what it really means is that that sound, which is not created by you know, striking of two objects that is there, it's vibration, it's energy that when you quieten your mind enough, you can sense it and feel it, but you cannot feel it with your mind and intellectual thing. You have to really calm down to come to that state. There's a great level of uh, importance given to Anad Nad, which is really the vibration in the, you know, ancient yogic cultures in the scriptures and all for the right reasons, right? Because people at those times understood what was the basis of our energy. They recognized it and they wanted to pass the message on. So I'm just sharing this, you know, from the little bit of the spiritual side of the things that it's not just the science that recognizes it's actually spiritual myth you know side of the people recognize a lot um, earlier and gave that to us in form of the scriptures but unfortunately we have lost those things in translations while it's not a secret and it's been written in you know, in this ancient scriptures and texts and uh, people have been practicing, it still requires a practice, an intentional practice to come to learn and to be able to do it um, so that it can bring you the results that you expect from your life. It's not going to just happen by you reciting, you saying the words out loud. It has to have that deeper connection with those words, the feeling that you want to acquire. If you really want to understand the deeper science behind it, uh, you can do your research. You can pick books from Dr. Joe Dispenza, um, Breaking breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, or um, uh, Becoming Supernatural. These two books are really, really awesome from Dr. Joe Dispenza. You can also look into um, Esther Hicks, Dr. Wayne Dyer, these people have written quite a uh, detailed explanation of, you know, vibration and feeling and how it connects, how what the resonation is, what the heart-mind connection is. You know, if you get into the details of those things, you'll be able to understand deeply why you need to have this emotion. I will put the links for these books and talks in my episode so uh, hopefully that helps now coming down to how do we make our affirmations work the fact that you understand you need to have an affirmation that supports what you're feeling or how you're feeling rather then the missing link is that you create that emotion that feeling and then go to affirmation so for example when you're feeling lack, when you're feeling negative, when you're feeling low, there's no point of going and doing an affirmation. Oh, I'm doing well. I, it will not work, right? What will work instead is, well, firstly, let that emotion pass out. Like these are emotions. You have to give space and honor them. And let them pass through you 
So you might have to spend time where you have to put a limit on what time you put it on. But once that is done, do something that can either neutralize that emotion, right? Or even better, you can start feeling better. So in other ways, do something to change your mood, whether it's spending time with your children, playing with your pet, listening to music, going for a walk, going for a workout, whatever it is you need to do to prepare yourself so that you're in the right state, you're ready to go do the affirmation that you're naturally feeling good. And then making sure that whatever you're affirming about, there's not a negative talk going in your mind against that, right? If I'm affirming that I want, you know, if I'm affirming that I have a perfect partner in my life, and I don't need to make sure that I'm feeling it, that I'm not feeling the lack. If you're feeling the lack, no matter how hard you try, it's not going to work. So first thing is to go and work on the lack, on those negative subconscious emotions. And that's where, you know, Dr. Joel Dispenza's work is um, great there. It will help you get, understand how to get into your subconscious and, you know, drive that uh, negative emotions out and replace it with positive things so that then you're able to do the affirmations positively and hopefully it will work. So try these tools. Let me know how it goes for you. Also, let me know what you thought of this episode. What were your takeaways, whether something resonated with you or not? Share with me, you know, uh, this is the way we interact. You let me know what you want and I hear and I make changes. And if you think this doesn't work, well, let me know. <laughs> okay, let, <clears throat> let's try to vibrate at the same frequency. All right, thank you. I will see you around. All right, I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did and got some valuable nuggets out of it. If you liked it, there are other shows you can watch. There are exactly what you need. And I ask you to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the show. Uh, really, I want to hear from you firsthand what you felt, what you liked, what you didn't like. So thank you and see you around.